Yes guys, the video you've been waiting for is here. I'm talking about Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 versus Exynos 2200. Every year, Samsung gives us two SoCs for their flagship devices. That means that we have two different chipsets for what could be the gaming performance that sets up all gaming performances, right? Now, we know the Exynos 2200 comes with AMD's uh, GPU. Yes, AMD GPU in Exynos with RDNA 2, so which means you should be getting some really great performance. But Snapdragon says, wait, 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 just hold on a second. I've been here around in the gaming business on mobile for a while. Now, when you're looking at both devices, the black version here, or the black colored version, is my uh, Snapdragon HN1, and the green colored version, which actually looks lovely, I love the color, is the Exynos version. So pretty much is simply Ichigo versus Gohan. <laughs> anyway. I'll leave the wallpapers down for you guys down below, but let's let's go ahead and jump in here. Now, does this mean that you have two very different devices? No. Now, you have devices that have the same displays, the same camera modules, the same batteries, the same everything other than the SOC, which is the main processors in here. Now, that is where you get, you're gonna be seeing some differences between game performance and maybe even imagery as well. Now. You're wondering, when you get the Exynos version? If you're in the UK, you will get it then. If you're other parts in the world, well, the Snapdragon version is in the US and most regions around the world. Now, let's start off with, of course, benchmarks, because you guys love benchmarks, right? Now, we're gonna start off with Geekbench. Geekbench, I think, is a nice medium to start off, and this is where we see uh, the benchmark comparisons. So with CPU benchmarks, uh, Snapdragon HN1 clearly wins, both in single core and multi core performance. And uh, it is clear that, you know, it's just better at that CPU perspective. Now, when it comes to compute performance, you can see here with OpenCL that Exynos 2200 wins. It wins with a higher number, about 3,000 more. And that is an OpenCL. When we do Vulkan, it's about, you know, 4,000 uh, more compared to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 version. So again, does this mean one is better than the other, especially with the GPU performance with that compute? Well, not necessarily, not necessarily. So let's take a look at another test. This is the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. Now, when you look at it, the stability uh, differences are quite varied. 92.5% on Exynos, 79.1% on Snapdragon. But Snapdragon has better loop scores and much higher at 2559 compared to 1826. And as you can see with the loop stress test, yes, it is more steady, uh, kind of on the Exynos, but much higher and still steadier on the Snapdragon. But again, now does this mean that Snapdragon is better? Well, let's take it to the games. now. Let's start off with um, emulators. Now, I couldn't test all, but I was able to jump into Redream, and Redream plays well on both the Snapdragon version and the Exynos version. You get 60 frames per second, and I know you guys are saying, what about PlayStation 1s? Give me more time. I'll probably do that for you. But it plays well on both, as well as also game streaming services like Xbox Game Pass. Uh, that also runs at 60 frames per second, so those are covered. Now, when we go to our main Android games, let's start off, with, of course, with our very favorite game, which is our baseline, Call of Duty Mobile. Now, we saw Call of Duty Mobile on the Snapdragon HN1 run really well, 60 frames per second at the highest setting. This is where things got a little interesting. On the Exynos 2200 version, I didn't have any high settings. I had really low settings, and that actually was shocking. So I played at the low settings and I got 60 frames per second, but you're not playing at the highest settings of the game. That means to me that maybe some of the games I'll be playing here might not be fully optimized, but those are the numbers I got. So I said, let's transition over to PUBG Mobile. Now PUBG Mobile, you know very well that that's a game that we can play two main settings, Smooth Extreme, as well as Ultra HD Ultra. I usually do that in every video and the Snapdragon HN1 version does flying colors. Smooth Extreme, 60 frames per second, and um, Ultra HD Ultra at 40 frames per second. Now, with the Exynos 2200, we don't have those settings. There is no Ultra HD Ultra available yet, and of course, no Smooth Extreme. So I played at Smooth High, and I got roughly around 30 frames per second. Not the best, not what I was looking for, 
but again, that is not optimized. So that is leaving me with a little bad feeling here that I might not be getting the numbers I should be getting, especially if Samsung is saying this is their top tier device and it should be the same across the board. So let's go ahead and check out, of course, games with high refresh rate. And we decided to display Real Racing 3 to see the kind of performance we got there. And uh, to the credit, Real Racing 3 uh, gives you very close uh, performance at about 119 for the Exynos 2200 version and uh, 117 for the Snapdragon version. So we see similar performance there, matching the higher frame rate. So that's, that's a good sign. That is a good sign. Now, what about games that are more graphically intensive, right? So I went over and uh, checked out uh, Black, uh, Black Mobile Desert. Now, Black Mobile Desert is a game that you guys said I should check out. Played it on the Snapdragon version, and I got about 43 frames a second. Steady, solid, the game ran smooth. Again, that's just the frame rate I'm, I'm getting for it. Moved over the Exynos version, and yes, it's the same frame rate, 43 frames per second. So it seems that that optimization might be the key thing here for Exynos, but performance-wise, it's matching on certain games, which include Black Mobile Desert. Then we head over to the game that, of course, everyone knows uh, is not as optimized as we'd like, Genshin Impact. Now, Genshin, if you guys remember well in my S22 uh, Ultra Gaming video, that ran on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 at about 42 frames per second. And we also tested this out against the iPhone and it ran better than the iPhone, which did about 38 frames per second. So what about the Exynos 2200? Well, Exynos 2200 did an average of 37 frames per second. It dipped lower at some points to the 20 frames per second. Now, I'm not saying that this is the performance for it, but again, optimization is key. But the key thing here, it is, it is not, it is lower than the Snapdragon version, which is at 42 and this is at 37 frames per second. So put that in mind whichever way you want. So now you're thinking there is a lot of discrepancies between the performance, especially now that devices are available uh, between the Snapdragon 8 and 1 version and the Exynos 2200. What about temperatures? Is one hotter than the other? We've heard over the years that the Snapdragon version usually runs really hot. And when I looked at the temps, both temps are similar. Uh, when I played games at the set, same amount of time, the Snapdragon version gave me about 106, 105 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, while the Exynos gave me the same temperatures as well. So I felt like I was getting the same temperatures and it felt like at least in terms of temps, you're gonna be ending around the same for both devices, which I think is standard and is pretty cool. Now, are there any more surprises? Is there anything else? Well, I decided to take a few images off the devices and I wanted to just show you guys because I'm noticing some changes and differences here between the images from the HN1 and the Exynos which should be similar but I am seeing differences. What I want to ask you guys here is should I go ahead and do a camera comparison for you? So leave those thoughts down below because I'm very interested to see what this device devices actually uh, bring up in terms of images and if they are similar. So overall Here's the big question. Is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Galaxy S22 Ultra better than the Exynos version? Well, the short answer is yes. The long answer is hold on a second. The reason I'm saying that is because as we can clearly see, certain games are just not optimized. If those three main games are not optimized, then a lot of games will not be optimized. Call of Duty Mobile didn't have the right settings as well as also PUBG Mobile didn't have the right settings. And we can see the poor optimization that we usually see from Genshin Impact. This is why I'll say if you are in a region that has the Exynos processor and you are a gamer, this probably is not the device for you to get right now until updates roll out for those games. Now, I don't know when that would happen. I don't know if that will happen, but we can clearly see that optimization is probably the biggest factor that gives Snapdragon uh, the edge with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So guys, that is what I think about gaming on these devices. If there are updates, I would definitely do an updated video for you, hopefully maybe in a month or two or even three. So we'll see where it actually stands and if it's actually better. But if you want to check out more videos about gaming on these devices, uh, like gaming um, with the S22 Ultra versus the iPhone uh, 13 Pro Max, go ahead and click that link and check it out, as well as also gaming on the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. That's a really big device. So click on the link guys, check it out. And 
always enjoy your entertainment.